Jones, a Quinn Martin production, starring Buddy Ebsen, also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera, with guest stars Kathleen Beller, Lyndon Childs, Richard Evans, Victoria Thompson, Randy Powell, Tonight's episode, Run Away to Terror. Still up. I was just getting a book to read. Well, certainly have a lot to choose from. Look, Julie, I'm sorry about what I said about your shaping up and setting a better example for your sister. I, well, you know how I am when I lose my temper. I tend to say things I don't mean. Yeah, I know. Not that you didn't say a few unkind things yourself. There's one thing you got from your mother, it's her temper. Anyway, I'm glad I got a chance to apologize. It's no good going to bed on top of an argument. Good night, Princess. Get a good night's sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Father owes me something, doesn't he? Okay. Just remember, babe, it's you I want. Oh, you've got me. Forever and ever. Hey, better get out of here before your old man finds you gone. inside with all my stuff in it. I don't want to leave it behind in case they start checking on us. You're a hard man to find, Steve. Like I told Mr. Whalen, you want him, I'll find him. That's what I'm real good at. Look, I wasn't trying to run out on you. That's the truth. You go tell Mr. Whalen. Uh-uh. I don't tell Mr. Whalen nothing. He tells me. And he tells me, I better come back with those 12 Gs you are. 
But not come back at all. Marty, all I need is a little more time. What's a few more hours, huh? A few more hours, I promise. Your promises won't buy garbage. This time it's different. Look, I met this chick. My father's loaded. This girl thinks I'm in love with her. It's gonna be like taking candy from a baby. Listen, punk. You can go with me easy. Or I'll break you in half and carry the pieces up. It's, uh... It's all up to you. Fortunately, both my daughters got their mother's looks. She died just over a year ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You say that uh, Julia had run away before? Just after my wife's death. She and her mother are always very close, so I'm sure that had a lot to do with it, plus my efforts at trying to raise a headstrong young teenager. How did you handle it that time? Dad called the cops. They found her eventually and brought her home, of course. I tried talking to her about it, but ended up in an argument. She said I didn't understand her because I was away so much. Is that true? Yes, I'm afraid so. My business takes me all over the world. That's just the way it is. Why didn't you call the police this time? Well, Julie turned 18 a few months ago. She's no longer a child. I must say, I'm more worried about her this time than I've ever been before. What kind of the jewelry? Well, she found out where I kept the combination of the safe. Now, I don't give a damn about the jewelry. Belonged to her mother, I was going to give it to her anyway when she turned 21. But the fact that she took it, you know, it's not like her to steal. How much jewelry was there? I think the insurance value is about $60,000. Yeah, it is quite a bit for a young lady to be carrying with her. Well, I'm afraid somebody else might think so, too. Do you have any close friends that you might have gone to? Mr. Jones, I would be the last one to know about Julie's friends. How about you, Melinda? Well, Julie doesn't have a lot of friends, except for me, but I'm her sister. Hey, wait. There was this one girl. Julie had her over a couple of times to swim. She seemed to like her a lot. You recall her name? Gloria. Gloria Hanley. She works at that health club Julie started going to when she went on that diet. What's the name of the club? Jupiter. It's that big one on Wilshire. Ah, oh, come on, Julie. I told you nobody followed us. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You're not going to tell anybody where I am, are you? Not even if they torture me. Welcome to the Garden of Elysium. I'm Brother Love, and this is my assistant, Mr. Felicity. I'm the person... No, please. Don't tell me. You're the young lady who called about a friend. And you're that friend, desiring a place of peace and tranquility. How did you know which one of the us... The mind is nothing more than a transmitter of emotion. Sending out vibrations of love, hate, anger, joy. Over the years, I've trained myself to receive these vibrations, interpret them, change those that need changing, and then return them to the sender, thus giving birth to a more positive and happy life force. And, uh, my vibrations? <sighs> Sadness. Much confusion. A, a bundle of nerves ready to explode. Now, now. Don't worry. You've come to the right place. 
The very name Elysium means the ideal state of happiness. Brother Love, I only heard about your retreat from a friend of a friend, but I understand there is some kind of charge. Well, yes, I'm afraid even pure air costs money these days, but I assure you it's nothing more than a heart force is willing to give. Sister? Uh, you said on the phone you'd be needing a ride back to town? Yes. Brother Free. Yes. Would you mind giving this young lady a ride back to L.A.? Not at all. Well, take care of yourself, Julie. And if you need anything, call me. Thank you so much. Uh, sister, Sister Felicity, if you'll be good enough to show Julie to the House of Hope, I'll take this I'll, bag. I'll, I'll take this one, thank you. Of course, of course. A sister here, perhaps we'd better give our new guest something to help her relax. Well, no, no drugs. I'm not into that. Uh, Julie, we have no drugs here, no drugs at all. Only nature's medicine. You mustn't worry. Shirley said you wanted to speak to me? Yes, I did. Uh, well, if you're interested in becoming a member, we have several plans that might be right for you. Yes, I'm sure you do. But the only thing I'm interested in right now is the whereabouts of Julie Enright. I'm a private investigator and is my associate, Jedediah Jones. Did you know she was missing? No, of course not. How would I? Well, according to her sister, you and she are good friends. <sighs> we had lunch a couple of times, but we're hardly what you call really close. Julie's a nice kid. When was the last time you talked to her? Oh, it's been weeks, maybe longer. Well, then how come uh, Shirley told us that she tried to call you here twice last night? Well, if she did, she didn't get me because I was off. Didn't she call you at home? No, she didn't. Anyway, Julie's 18. She's got a right to leave home without her father hiring a private detective to drag her back. Gloria, for her own sake, if you know where Julie is, it might help her if you told her. I'm sorry. I didn't even know she was gone. Well, if you do get any information, would you please call me? I will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to work. She's covering, Barnaby. She knows something. You're probably right, Jedediah. We'll keep an eye on her. Mm -hmm. Keep her out all night. There's nothing in here but some clothes. Well, this was the bag that she was so concerned about. Well, now I see why. Lovely. Do you think these have something to do with that blood on the fender? I don't know. It's possible. Maybe they even belong to her. Are you kidding? They must be worth a fortune. So's Julie. According to her ID, in case of emergency, notify her father, Douglas Enright. Is he somebody? Just a man worth millions. No. No. I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, no, I didn't mean to. Sister dear, um, get the tape recorder. Bring it here. I believe we found ourselves goose that lays a golden egg. Nothing. Well, Barnaby, it's as if we never talked to her this morning. She's just over there, doesn't seem to have a care in the world. 
Somehow I expected more than that. Well, maybe I was wrong. If Gloria's telling the truth, we're just wasting our time following her. Jedediah, sometimes in this business, you have to stick with your first instincts. Besides, Betty has struck out on all those names in Julie's address book. What about the pawn shops? I checked. Consensus is that she's going to have a tough time hocking that much jewelry. Well, it looks like Gloria's still our link, huh? Yeah, sure does. Julia. Maybe you better go see where to. Drive it nice and easy. Steve, what are you doing here? Where's Julie? How should I know? You're her best friend. She trusts you. I don't know where she is. You're lying. Honest, Steve. A private detective came by today asking the same thing. Did he ask about me? No. I told him I hadn't seen her in about a month. That's the truth, Steve. You better be. Or you're gonna be real sorry. What's this all about? Never mind. You hear from her, I want to know about it right away. Understand? Of course. Oh, sure, I know her. That's Julie. Oh, a real sweet girl. Kind of lost and lonely, though. Did you ever come in here with a boyfriend? You know, the secret of the success of this business is that I am deaf, dumb, and blind. Sadie, it's very important that we find her. Well, she was seeing a guy by the name of Steve Bender. <laughs> With any luck at all, it won't last very long. Why, what kind of a guy is he? You heard of Mr. Right? <laughs> Steve was Mr. Wrong. I bet he owes every gambler in this town, you know what I mean? When was the last time you saw him? Earlier this evening, as a matter of fact, came in here looking for Julie, very, very anxious to find her. Did you mention why? No. And I didn't ask. Sadie, you happen to know where Benter lives? <laughs> he moves around a lot. Like I said, he's a real winner. Well, thank you very much. Hey, um, why don't you come back sometime and I'll buy you a milk, big fella. Sounds like an idea. Okay, what next, big fella? Well, gamblers have to place bets now and then. I think it's time we interviewed some bookies. is essential. That'll be all, brother. What did you do with my jewelry? 
We believe that worldly possessions such as jewels can only stand in the way of true peace. Will and you happiness. come on? That's why I've taken them from you. You mean stolen them from me? If you wish. That's the way you want to see it. That's the way you got them in the first place, isn't it? From your father's safe. How? Why do you think that? I know a lot about you, Julie. Like what happened at the garage the other night, how you ran over a man and killed him. And I've got it all right here in your own sweet voice. How? Under sedation, people do give away their secrets. What are you going to do with that? You're a very lovely young lady, and you've got a very wealthy father. I think this ought to be worth a large amount of money, considering what might happen to his daughter and his reputation if you should go to the police instead. Please, you can keep the jewelry. Thank you. I'd plan to. And when your father endows our little retreat, you can go. You're free. How do I know? Julie, you've got to learn to trust me. My brother Love, remember? Not a common criminal. I don't get it. They blew it to the Knicks by four. They lost to the Celtics by eight. And Vegas picks him to win by three. How? Why? What do they know? If you don't see it, it's two to one we ain't got it. Are you Sammy? No, I'm Paul Newman. I like spending my time in this here box. Listen, I was, I was wondering if you could help yeah. me. You, uh, you follow basketball? Chicago Bulls. It's my hometown. Well, we all got to come from someplace. I, I don't figure it. Those Vegas people picked the Lakers to win by three tonight. Me, I don't see it. Would you? I got to call it a toss up. I was thinking that maybe... Okay, okay. I give up. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a guy named Steve Benter. In the lost and found departments on the fourth floor. Well, now, I've heard that he places some of his bets with you. He places bets? Yeah. I sell newspapers, magazines. Okay. I'll take one of each. You a cop? No, I'm a guy with a pocket full of markers, all signed by Benter. You should join the club. You too, huh? No, not in your life. When I deal with punks like Benter, strictly cash up front. But I hear you're not the only one looking for him. Word is there's some real heavyweights on his tail. You have any idea where I can find him? You want a lifetime subscription? Uh, wait, wait right here. I'll be right back. I sure hope you got lucky because I didn't. Want to be? I almost have it. Give me another 20. 20? I just gave you 50. Yeah, but you wouldn't believe the price of magazines these days. I hope you don't run into a bookie who sells real estate. <laughs> to rent a room on the second floor. Doesn't look like there's anybody home, Barnaby. Let's take a look inside. Start in here, boss. Okay. Hold it, Joe. Here, I'm glad to see you have moved. Want me take a look at this? Pretty good.
I heard what he said, taking candy from a baby while was driving off. And a man came running out of the garage. It was too late. I hit him, and he fell. I killed him. I killed him. I drove off. Just drove off. That's it. She sounds like she's in a fog. Maybe she was drugged or something. Not her normal speaking voice. When did this arrive, Melinda? What's in the mailbox when I went to get the mail this morning? And then the call came in about a half an hour after that. It was a man's voice, very distant, very calm, strange. How much did he say he wanted? $200,000, ready by noon tomorrow. I asked him about Julie. All he would say is that she was all right and that he would be in touch with me later. On the tape, Julie mentioned something about a garage. Any idea where that might be? No. Well, we'll check and see if there have been any reports of hit and run accidents. Barnaby, maybe we should let Lieutenant Biddle know about this. The police? Sooner or later, we're going to have to let them in on the fact that Julie may have been involved in a car accident. That kind of information you can't withhold forever. But we don't even know if that's true. If she was drugged, that might be a lie. Seems to me the most important thing right now is to find out where she is and get to her. Can you raise the money? Yes, without any trouble. If you'll take my advice, Mr. Enright, you'll stall as long as possible and insist on talking to Julie. Once you pay the money, you may never see your daughter again. All right. But I want you to work as fast as you possibly can. There isn't much time. I know. Marty Coleman. He's as close as I can come to a hit and run on the night you're talking about. It's a rap sheet. There's a coroner's report. Enforcer for the bookies. The last we heard, he was collecting on bad markers for Sid Whalen, one of the bigger gamblers in town. Yeah, we're looking for a guy who was hit by a car, not by a cannon. This joker was blown away by a 38 caliber slug. He was also hit by a car. A little further down, where it lists abrasions on the body. Fractures on the lower torso due to impact from heavy object as if hit by a car. That's it. It's also skid marks found near the body. Which means it could have been hit by the car after he was shot. That's right, because according to this, somebody reported hearing shots inside the garage, but the car hit him outside. Barnaby, this client you're working for, is he connected with this? Could be. Care to give me a name? I will, just as soon as I'm sure, Lieutenant. I'll give you 24 hours. Then sure or not, I want in on it. You got it. I'm doing court. You finish, leave that stuff on the desk. I'll see you later. OK. Well, what about it, Barnaby? Muscle for a top gambler and a loser like better. Sounds like a shootout at the OK Corral to me. Well, you know Bender's trigger happy. Yeah, but what I still don't understand is why Julie thinks that she killed this guy, Coleman. I know, but one thing is for sure. If Julie was there, she witnessed the whole thing. Mm. Let's go. I told you, Mr. Jones, I don't know where Julie is. I think you do. Well, you're wrong. Now, if you'll excuse me. Gloria. This is no longer a case of a young lady running away from home. Julie thinks that she killed someone. That's the reason she's hiding out. What do you mean? Look, we don't have all the facts yet, but the night that Julie ran away, she might have hit somebody with her car. A guy named Marty Coleman, who's a collector for a local gambler, only she didn't kill him. He'd already been shot. By who? We have a good hunch it was Steve Benter, Julie's boyfriend. Steve? Yes, that's right. Have you seen him? Yes. He's looking for Julie, too. Well, if he finds her before we do, she may be in serious trouble. Look, Gloria, if you're any kind of a friend of Julie's, you're going to stop covering for her and tell us where she is. All right. I drove her to a retreat outside of Elmridge, the Garden of Elysium. She's in the House of Hope.
I brought you something to eat. What, bread and water? No. Wild berries, fresh organic vegetables, everything that's good for you. Good for me? Like keeping me locked up here? Just as soon as your father pays the money, Brother Love will let you go. Until then, we'll try to make you as comfortable as possible. Look, even a flower to decorate your table. It's very pretty. Flowers have a way of changing bad vibrations into good ones. No harm done. Oh! Oh, um, could you please help me? I saw you yesterday when I arrived. I, I had a car. Do you have any idea where they put it? <sighs> Just be sure you've got it straight now. I don't want any kind of mix-up. You'll be waiting in the ravine to pick up the money. What about the girl? The girl? We may have to arrange an eternal peace for the girl. Maybe you better look in on her. Sister Felicity's been gone a long time. company doesn't like us to pick up riders. Well, I won't tell if you don't. I mean, I've had it up to here with all this peace and quiet, and I thought maybe if I could get into town and have a little fun, get it on, you know what I mean? Yeah, but... Oh, come on, friend. I bet you know where I could get a little action. Well, I get off in a few hours. Well, then what are we waiting for? Hop in. You're doing beautifully. <laughs> Just keep at it. That's all it takes. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. please. Jupiter Health Club, may I help you? Gloria, this is Julie. Julie, where are you? I, I ran away. That place was horrible. They, they were keeping me prisoner. They what? Well, where are you now? I'm in Elmridge, but I don't have my car or anything. I, I really need help. Can you come and pick me up? Oh, sure, sure. Just a few minutes. There's a park on, on Laurel and Spring, Grant Park. I'll wait here for you. Grant Park in Elmridge. OK, I'll see you in about an hour or so. Bye. Shirley, will you cover for me? Something important's come up. I've got to go. There's one right over there. Take a look. You know, they're not going to just let us walk right in there and take her. Jedediah, I think the time has come for you and me to part company. I'll try to keep it busy for you. God, her father won't want that tape in the hands of the police. I don't like it, brother. I don't like it at all. Good 
afternoon. Welcome to the Garden of Elysium, dear friend. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, I understand that you people specialize in peace and love. And, uh, as I always say, uh, that's one thing the world could use a lot of, peace and love. Yes, I quite agree with you. So I uh, thought I'd like to spend a few days up here, sort of get away from the hectic city pace. Uh, everyone around here seems to be uh, pretty peaceful. Well, I hate to disappoint you, Mr. Um... Jones. Jones. I'm sorry to say we're all filled up. If you'll excuse us. Well, uh, since I'm here, uh, why don't I just take a look around and I know what to expect next time I come back? We're very busy, sir. Very busy. If you'd like to make an appointment, I'm sure Brother Free can arrange for you to visit some other day. Uh, what is that building right over there? That's the building of divine meditation. Is that a fact? And it looks like just an ordinary building. Searching for buried treasure. Where's Julianne, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, I'll explain it. Mr. Jones, I read vibrations better than most men read newspapers, and your vibrations tell me you haven't come here seeking inner peace. I'd like you to leave immediately. I'm not leaving without Julianne Wright. I'm a private detective. And right, Julianne Wright. I don't think I've ever heard of her. Have you, Brother Free? No. And I'd say this man is trespassing. One of you found this in there. With her initials, don't it? Now, do you still say you don't know anything about her? I don't know how they got in that house. Well, if you'd like to look around, if you'd like to look inside, go ahead. But then I want you both to leave. Are you looking for the girl that was in the House of Hope? Yes, you know where she is. Sarah. Sarah, it's time for your meditation, isn't it? Sarah, it is very important that we find Julie. It could save her life. Life is what it's all about, isn't it, Sarah? She left with Dave. Dave who? He works at a laundry in Elm Ridge. I understand you gave a lift to a young lady out of the Garden of Elysium today. No, you made a mistake, mister. Come on, you were seen leaving there with her. Hey, look. It's strict here about giving anyone a lift. I could lose my job for it. Well, don't worry, we're not going to tell anybody, but uh, it's very important that we find her. Okay, so I gave her a ride. She said she was going buggy out there. Wanted to have a little fun. Where'd you leave her? I left her right outside of town. We're outside of town. Hey, look, what's this all about, anyway? It's a long story. Where is she? She's waiting for me at the park on spring. Thank you very much.
that look like Venter's car right there? It sure does. Check it out. I'll take a look around. After Julie. Where are they? They ran off toward those hills. All right, look, Barnaby went that way. See if you can find him. Tell him where I've gone, okay? Okay. I'm not going to hurt you. What do you want? You shouldn't have run out of me that night, Julie. Yeah, well, I heard you in the garage. You don't love me. You're just trying to use me. I just told Marty that to get him off my back. I figured if I could get away from him, you and I could take off like we planned. <sighs> well, then, then nothing's really changed. We can still go away. You still got the jewels? No, but I know where they are. I can get them. Well, Steve, it doesn't matter. My dad's rich, you know that. All I have to do is ask him for something and he'll give it to me. Julie, I can't take that chance anymore. You're the only one who can connect me with Marty's murder. You? You killed that man? As if you didn't know. Ah! See you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, too. I guess we all have a lot of growing up to do, me included. Hey, Pumpkin. Oh, Julie. I missed you so much. Dad and I were so worried. You don't have to hurry. The police will be in touch with you about the recovery of the jewels. They've located those people? Mm hmm. Brother Levin and his pals are in custody, and chances are they'll spend the next few years in prison. Thank you. I don't really know what else to say. You just said it. Thank you. Take care of those two. You're a very lucky man. Yes, I am. Shall we go? You know, Barnaby, J.R. and I are lucky, too. That's why we've decided to take much better care of you in the future. That's right, so take the rest of the day off, boss. Hmm. Well, that takes care of how Betty gets to the dress sale in Beverly Hills. But uh, what are you planning to do with the rest of the afternoon you just gave me off? Well, since I'll have nothing to do, I figured I'd spend it with Gloria. You know, get a few tips on physical fitness, that kind of thing. Fun, yeah, I had that same idea myself. But uh, you go ahead. No, 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 you do it. No, I don't mind. <laughs> 